Hi, it's Mark from Snooker Crazy. Uh, it's going to be a very quick video. You might be able to tell if I just turn the lens around. I've got a lot of steam going past me. Uh, I'm under the clock here, so this will be a very quick video, whether it works or it doesn't. We'll see. Uh, I've, I did a queue up recently. It was an old one, and I had to steam it. And I had a couple of comments from a couple of older guys, which is a little bit of a surprise, um, saying that steam won't actually affect whether a queue bends too much or not. Obviously they used to bend old wagon wheels and things like that and they still do they make archways with bent wood. Um, they affect it with steam to break down the structure of the wood and then they'll put it into some form of clamp or a former to make sure it stays in the right place. Uh, all I'm going to do today is just to show that wood bends. I'm not going to show you how I do it but you can tell I've got, um, I've got a rig below me uh, so I'm a bit tight on space. Hopefully won't be any accidents. Um, and I've had the queue in the rig just for a little while. Uh, all I'm going to do basically to start with is to take it out and bend it. Now obviously by hand you can bend a little bit with your hands, there's different ways you can do it, but with but by hand you can bend Q slightly and the, the thinking is it well it'll always go back. Some do, some don't. With steam you break down the structure and as long as you can let it dry in place properly it should stay there. A little bit of spring back but should pretty much stay there. Um, I'm watching the clock at the same time, so this, this is obviously a little bit rushed uh, and not the sort of video I normally do. Uh, hopefully you can see on the lens, to say if I turn it, you can see that I'm getting an awful amount of steam from the rig, so I don't, I don't get too long to do this. Right, so in a little while, not too long, what I'm going to do is to take the cue out. Uh, it's going to be pretty hot, uh, so if you see me jumping around you know why. Now hopefully we can get most of it on video, but I just want to show the effects that normally if, for any of you that have done them by hand you can move them a bit but then you've got the tension of the wood. Now this cue is about an average stiffness I would say um, so I'd expect to be able to move it a bit by hand hoping that you can see that steam dramatically affects uh, the structure of the wood and although you don't get long uh, you can bend it quite a long way and we'll see how far. So. For those that think that ah, that's rubbish, uh, hopefully we'll disprove that. Um, I think we're pretty much there, so I'm going to disappear off the video a couple of times. I'm probably going to have to rush around a bit and then get it. And all that's going to happen is I'm going to whip the queue out, turn off the steamer, hopefully, pop back, hopefully, so you can hear me here. And then I'm just basically going to try and move it as quick as I can. Now, normally, I would have some form, a former, that I can move the queue round. Uh, I'm not going to do it like this, so I'm going to have to do it by hand, and, and I don't know how that's going to go. So, but for the ones that are interested in seeing what it does, hopefully you should do it right. Uh, so I'm going to disappear for a bit, hopefully, and try and get this out without burning myself, and hopefully you'll be able to see what I do with the wood. Yeah, pretty hot. Right, so this is pretty straight. And I'm gonna now. Lots of cues can snap. There's no doubt about it. So I'm gonna try and feel my way through the elastic limits of the wood without burning myself too much. Let's see what what I can get. But for those that think that you can't bend wood um, in a queue, once you've taken off whatever the treatment is and you're confident you can get into the pores of the wood, hopefully this is going to disprove that. If I don't overdo it, so I've not had it in long enough, but certainly long enough. Hopefully to prove the point, it's already drying now, I can feel it. And normally, you want to shoot round corners, that do it. But you can see the arc. Now I've normally have that as a bond in place somewhere. And let it dry and clamp it. Um, 
I think you can tell it's not going back. That's pretty, pretty significant, significant for a bend. I don't think there's enough heat left in it, but let's just see even at this temperature what we can do with it. Now it's gonna because it's dry and it's gonna want to go back to where it was. I'm fighting it cooling down at the moment. Now normally I'd have this on a flat surface. But it's not straight again, but I would normally put this against the level, roll it on a, a surface I know is okay. straighten it that way this is not how I do it it's just trying to show you that it can go back well that's it's not straight obviously but the point is that you would work it I mean you wouldn't be bending the cue that much um, I'll not have one like that but uh, I'm sure it's coming Probably getting it back to something like the bad ones that come in, but I think it's pretty much got its temperature now so I think that's going to pretty much stay where it was but the point is we see you can break the structure down and keep it right off when it started straight that should be it then once you've bent it you clamp it or put it in a some sort of former to make sure it's, it's dead tight um, and straight of course to the shape that you want um, but even cooling you can can take it back slightly. It's not. It's not something that you should ever need to do. Really, you just get a time limit, and once that time limit's there, you're set. So it's how far do you want to go from that? Normally, with a queue, you're only doing little bits. So I'm, I'm gently doing, it and I'm doing it against, you know, say a flat surface or something, so I can roll it and see how I'm going, and gently sort of just tweak it piece by piece. I'm not. This is not a how to do it video, and this is not how I do it. It's just to prove with the bent of the wood. But hopefully that proves that you can move it. And although it's not dead straight again, uh, you, can, you can move it right out and you can move it right back. So there's a lot more within the process that I do to prep the cue and what I do to it to make sure that the, basically the steam can get into the pores and change the structure. And there's a lot more I do after, there's a hell of a lot more I do afterwards. Um, to make sure that once it's set, we can then bring it up to the standard of what you'd expect of a of a refurbished queue or a straightened queue. Now, luckily the steam's died down. Um, now this queue, if you can see it, hopefully you can, is one that uh, came in about a week ago, and it's one that I posted on Facebook, which really all the comments have come from. Um, it was a guy popped in, lovely guy, basically it's from his father who passed away. He's been sat in a garage for a long time and uh, obviously open to the elements. It was in a like a, an open tube really, so basically it's just been leant against the wall. But the view was to try and get it back to something that's playable, um, which was a punt because, like I say to everyone, once you start to straighten, you can, you can feel a lot of the wood. If you've done a few, you can feel the tension and and where the elastic limits are, um, but there's always one that surprises you and it can snap. So I think I've only had 
got the three quarter one once that went, but I've been, I've been very, touch wood, I've been very, very lucky so far. Um, but this one was nice because he's not a player, the guy, he just wanted to play with his dad's cue, basically, and his dad's no longer with us, unfortunately. But he's not picked it up yet, so I wouldn't think he'd see the video before he comes. This was completely stripped, so it's an old, it's seen, an old Jack Gray cue. Just about hopefully see that. Uh, when it came to me, it was in quite a state. All the brass uh, plate screws were missing. Dents all over the butt, scratches everywhere, gouges, and the the shaft was all over the place. I mean, it was it was right off one way, then right off another, and then off. It, there's no way you could play with it. Um, had an old pigeon ring ferrule that had pretty much rotted away and fell off. Oh, it's actually over there. So, this sort of thing, very, very thin. Um, took it, well, it's, I, don't, I don't think you can see it in the video, but yeah, it rusted and just came straight off my fingers. And the end of the wood wasn't great, so I decided to fit him a ferrule because he wants to play with it. So, the, the the risk really was it snapping because it was in a hell of a state and the wood looked a little bit brittle in places so it really was whether we could take it for a transformation or not say so this one steamed about 10 minutes i reckon you know about 10 minutes but don't don't take that as if you ever build yourself a steamer they're all different because they're not different temperatures but depends how much volume you're putting into it and, it, and how much steam and, and drainage you got so they're, they're all different but i had this in for about 10 minutes in the rig that i got um and managed to work it reasonably quickly to where it should be and then a little bit by hand uh, and it's that if you can see it down there but you get the idea it's pretty straight and if you I should have took some photographs at the beginning I think I think I stuck one up there where it just shows the top section against a level going off a bit and it's, it's only a little bit but what you can't see is from about there to there in the thicker end of the the shaft that was the really bad bit and that's the bit that people are sort of telling me no you can't bend that um yeah you can i mean i tend to stay away from the shoulder of the cue if i can you know up around here and around the top of the fingers i like to sort of go from there onwards if possible every now and again you'll get a butt that's gone but um generally from there to the end of the cue is what i concentrate on now this one because i had to strip it I guess I'll give you a bit of a run over anyway because I think you've got the idea that wood does bend for the ones that uh, doubt it. Um, this was stripped completely and, and I think there's a picture on the Facebook post and the shame of it is as soon as it had to be stripped to cure a lot of the problems on there it pretty much goes back to what I would say a standard ash colour which is really light. But this being a, a really nice old cue um, I wanted to try and get it back to something a bit more antique looking. So I have a I mean, all the things I do here for old cues, they're all natural. Everything is, is made completely and mixed here, and it's all, all really natural. don't like to use chemicals unless I'm doing modern-day cues, and that's the sort of look that people want. They want a really high gloss, etc., etc. These are more of a matte shine. Uh, this particular one is just a cue age. So a lot of people buy it because they want it as a grain filler. It, it goes in the grain, but it's not what I call a grain filler. Grain filler, you can put it in there, let it go, it'll go rock hard, and then you'll sand round it, and then it will take up all the deviations of the grain against the basically the, the lighter ash. Um, but this this really ages everything, so it will fill in some of the grain, but what it will also do is age the shaft. And I don't, the light's particularly poor here, I'll try and stand back a bit, but this was completely light. Now this is a what I call a lovely old antique looking shaft as you'd expect if you pick something up that's sort of 78 years old you know and, and more um, and this is nice um, it was full of dents and scratches uh, the steam actually took a lot of the minor ones out and the rest I've obviously fixed since then the butt was awful to be honest um, so I don't know if you can see in this light we'll try and get it I've got no light to shine this against I don't think um, but you get an idea, you can't really see it, but this is this is lovely and smooth now. Lovely and smooth. What I did on the shaft was put this one to age it. This one is really mucky. Uh, it's a different, I've got different mixtures in there, so different oils. Um, but this, yeah, this is, you don't want to get this anywhere because it's a pain to get it off. 
So this one more in the grain. And then for the butt, it's another different oil wax mix. Um, and that just gives it that nice, I think, antique sort of looking feel. It just makes it super smooth. Um, and rather than being like loads of high gloss, uh, which I don't like on older cues, don't think it's meant to be that way. I know some of them are lacquered, but this, this just brings it into a nice matte shine. And as I said, it's all natural. So I mean, you could eat it, make you feel sick, but not not wise. And then I've got another one that um, gives it a slightly different colour depending on what wood I'm using. So it really depends what sort of effect I'm after. And also whether I want a little bit of grip in the butt or I want it to be smooth. Uh, the, this one will give me a nice smooth feeling. This one will give it a little bit of grip. So when you get to the shaft, I always like to think the shafts are going to be ultra smooth. And this one is lovely. It really is nice and smooth. Uh, and the butt, to be honest, is also smooth because I've used that particular oil wax mix. But it depends on people. I like the butt to be a little bit grippy, but just a tiny bit, not lacquer grippy. Anyway, I digress. But hopefully the guy will be pleased with this. And hopefully you've seen that... Uh, it can be done with steam, and it's. I mean, you can do it over a kettle. Depends on depends how bad it is and what it is you're trying to achieve. But hopefully that gets rid of the myth that you can't steam a cue because it won't really make much difference, especially in the thicker end of the butt. Obviously, I did most of the bending at the top end, but as per this one, um, yeah, there was a big bit around there, and that's that's pretty thick. And if I wanted to get into the pores more, I'd just leave it in the steamer longer. Um, and then it's just little movements, but you don't get long, you know. You, well, if you've got a minute to, to do it, I'd be shocked. Um, and then once it's once you've gone past that, you're fighting it, and then you clamp it. But yeah, I think that's it. Um, someone said, Oh, yeah, do you really mix your own oils or do you just pour them in from someone else's? And uh, I mean, don't really prove anything, I suppose, but. Apart from standing here watching you mix them, but I'm not going to tell you how to do that. But I keep thinking about selling them, but uh, in all honesty, I don't really get the time. I, I pass it on to a few cue makers, um, but there's nothing leaving here in great big batches. Uh, it's just what I ever get time for, and I don't generally get time for, for too much. For those that know, obviously, I, I do majestic cue cases as well. I've still got 12 cases on the go, so. Time is always short for me, uh, unfortunately. So I uh, hope this will help the understanding for a few other guys and hopefully that was a different sort of video for you but sorry it was a bit rushed but phew, didn't get much time anyway i'll uh, see you on the next video Turn on.